Alright, any uh, questions on the homework? Yes, ma'am. 53. 53. So you have $250 that you your group raised, okay? And you want to film some PSA, let's say, okay? So So you had a bake sale and you made $250 to make this public service announcement, okay? All right? But it's going to cost you, see, back in the old days, when we wanted to record something, we had to put a video tape or video cassette into it. You guys probably don't even know what a video cassette is anymore, okay? All right? But they spent $35 on um, tapes and supplies and all that fun stuff, okay? And then they rented a camera because they back in back in the old days you didn't have cameras on everything that you owned. You know what I mean? So they had to rent a camera for forty five dollars a day. Okay. So that means that they have so they spent thirty five dollars on tapes, and then they got to pay for the renting of the camera, and that at most is what they can spend. So they are renting the camera for $45 a day, plus they spent $35 on supplies, and they only have $250 to spend. So there's my inequality. That was the first part of the problem was you had to write out an inequality to model this situation. Okay? Then the second part said, solve said inequality. So I would subtract $35 from both sides. Then that leaves me with 45D is less than or equal to 215. Then I would divide both sides by 45. And that gives me D here is less than or equal to now, if I were to reduce that, that would be 43 over, oops, not over 5, that should be over 9. Oops, wrong color. Over 9, which is 4 and 7 ninths, or it's 4.7 repeat. Okay? So basically what they're saying is they can only rent the video camera for four and a half days before they want out of money. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, okay, so in theory, what you're saying is this first inequality and that's first doing that. Correct. Why did you make it? I didn't. Maybe I did, and I just I filled it in, and it wasn't supposed to. Yeah. 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 And witnesses for when I file a bullying report on Mr. Lindsmeyer mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. hating Iowa. Exactly. I, I still hate Iowa, and I will I will have that bully that bully report filed. I'll be talking to all of you later. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, oops. No. So, two things. First thing, if a, when you get a homework back and you didn't get a three on it, you can fix it. Okay? Okay, you can fix those. Homeworks are fixable. The only way that they're not fixable is if you don't turn them in because, you, remember, I don't accept late work. Okay? So you can make sure you stay on track and stay on, on pace. Okay? Second thing is, Tomorrow we will be reviewing. I'm hoping that I can get a Kahoot done yet this afternoon. Depends on how busy I get in the resource center this afternoon and or um, how hard it is to make a Kahoot. I heard it's not very hard, so uh, my, my goal is to, to make a Kahoot today um, for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I've never made a Kahoot before. I've used Kahoot, but I've never made one. Um, and then, so that would be what we were doing, we'll do tomorrow in class, we'll review tomorrow for the test on Friday, or excuse me, the test on Monday. Friday, you will have a 
formative assessment in the MRC. So during one of your off mods on Friday, go into the MRC. On the brown table behind the teacher's desk, there will be two folders. In one folder will be blank copies of the formative assessment. Take one of those, go somewhere, do it. You're on your honor that you that you do it and that you're not just copying straight out of the notes or you know using your notebook or using your book and stuff like that or doing it with somebody else. Then when you're done with that, there will be a second folder that will have the answer key in it. I want you to check it right away because the test is on Monday. Normally, I would just have you turn it in and I would check it and hand it back to you then the following Monday. But because the test is on Monday, I want you to check it right away so that you know what you need to work on over the weekend. So I guess you can check it and then on Monday. You'll turn it in on Monday then, yes. Okay? Right. With hopefully your corrections made then, because then on the back side they'll be correct. All of those instructions are written right on the formative assessment. So. Okay? Okay? Alright. Today. We are going to solve absolute value equations and absolute value inequalities. Does anyone know what the correct, I shouldn't say correct, what the true definition of an absolute value is? I can tell you what you probably think. Go ahead, Sam. Very good. That is the true definition. Okay. Now, it's a distance. How far the number is, how the distance, let's call it just that, let's call it the distance. A number is... zero. Okay. Because it's a distance, it's got to be positive. It's got to be positive because it's a distance. So, which is what you normally do. When you see absolute value, you just think, well, I just make it positive. Okay. Which is semi-true. Okay. So you just kind of make it positive and then you go on with your life. Okay. So, for instance, if I am evaluating the absolute value of 15, that's just 15. Because 15 is 15 units away from 0 on a number. The absolute value of negative 8 is positive 8 because negative 8 is eight spots left of zero on the number line. Yeah. Now, where that gets tricky is I might throw this next one at you. Okay? And this part right here is in the green box, that's positive eight, right? Because the absolute value of negative eight is positive eight. We just did it in part B. But there's this negative sign sitting out in front. So the answer here is negative 8. An absolute value can be negative if there's a negative sign in front of the absolute value. That's the only way it can be negative. Okay. Good to go on that. Bless you. Now, when we solve an absolute value equation, we have to do three things. Okay? So, in terms of an absolute value equation, this is what I'm going to refer to it as. We're going to have the guts of the absolute value, and that's going to equal the other side. So the first step that
that you are going to do is you are going to make two equations. The first equation that you're going to make is going to be the guts of the absolute value equals the other side. You're just going to write it without the absolute value on it. Your second equation that you're going to make is going to be the guts equals the negative of that other side. So now you've got two equations sitting out there. Logically says, let's Solve both of those. So anytime that you have an absolute value, you're going to get two answers. And then the third and final step is You should check both of your answers because the possibility is out there that some of your answers might not work. You might lose some of your answers. So, example A says the absolute value of x is equal to 4. Step number 1 says I'm going to make two equations. Well, my first equation is going to be the guts, x, equals the other side, 4. My second equation says my guts, x, are going to equal the negative of the other side, negative 4. That set the world on fire yet. We're learning how to crawl. So we can start walking. Pretty soon we'll be running marathons. Now I need to solve both of those equations. Luckily for us, that's done. Now I need to check both of those equations. The absolute value of 4 is 4. 4 is equal to 4. The absolute value of negative 4 is 4. 4 is equal to 4. Both of them check out. So my answers here are negative 4 and positive 4. Let's take a couple of more. You know when, you, when kids are learning how to walk, they first they take like, like wobbly steps, you know? So let's take our next wobbly step. Okay. So what is my, or what are, I should say, let's use the proper tense of English, what are my two equations that I make here? Two x minus four equals eight is my first one. And my second one is 2x minus 4 equals negative 8. 
Now I'm going to solve both of those. I'm going to add 4. That gives me 2x equals 12 and 2x equals negative 4. I'm going to divide everywhere by 2. That gives me x equals 6 and x equals negative 2. Yes? Yeah. Check them. 6 times 2 is 12. 12 minus 4 is 8. The absolute value of 8 is 8. So the first one checks out. 6 checks out. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Minus 4 is negative 8. Absolute value of negative 8 is 8. So that one checks out. So we have negative 2 and positive 6. As long as you give me the answers, I don't care. You know what I mean? I'll try those two. Let's see, 4 times 2 is 8, plus 3 is 11, the absolute value is 11. Negative 7 times 2 is negative 14, plus 3 is negative 11, the absolute value is 11. Good to go on A? Yeah? B. Negative 2 and positive 6? Yeah? Negative 2 and positive 6? Yeah? Thorns, do you agree? Because h minus 2 is going to equal negative 4, and so you add 2, you get negative 2. h equals negative 2, and then h minus 2 equals positive 4. And, yeah. So you still agree? Anybody not agree with negative 2 and positive 6? Talk to me, NASCAR. So what's my answer here? So if there's no negative sign out in front of the absolute value, your number's got to be positive. Okay? Yeah. So, let's go back to those that negative 2, because I agree that you should have gotten h equals negative 2 and h equals 6. Okay? If I check those, okay, so if I check h equals negative 2, I have the absolute value of negative 2 minus 2, which is the absolute value of negative 4, which is 4. Do you agree with me on that? And so you would have the equation down here, 4 equals negative 4. Does 4 equal negative 4? No. 
it does not. Okay? Likewise here, you'd have the absolute value of 6 minus 2, which is the absolute value of 4, which is 4, and that equals negative 4. Both of those do not work out, so both of those get crossed out because they are what's called extraneous solutions. Extraneous solutions are solutions that fail the check. And therefore, they are not part of your final answer. Okay. Extraneous solutions are not part of the final answer. If one of them fails, then just the other one is your answer. In that last example where both of them failed and there was none left, then your answer is no solution. Okay. So, let's try one here. Absolute value of 2x plus 5 equals 3x tells me what are my two equations. Then, let's solve those. This one gives me 5 is equal to x. This one gives me 5 is equal to negative 5x. Agree with 5 and negative 1 as our solutions. Okay. Let's check it. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 plus 5 is 15. The absolute value of 15 is 15. 3 times 5 is also 15. And 15 is equal to 15. So this one checks out. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Plus 5 is positive 3. The absolute value of positive 3 is positive 3. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Is 3 equal to negative 3? That is not. So negative 1 is an extraneous solution, and my only, f or my final answer then is just 5 or x equals 5. Try those two. Come on, Hufflepuff. <laughs> 
checking five. Four times five is 20, plus 10 is 30. Six times five is also 30. Absolute value of 30 works out. That one checks out. Negative one, I only need to check this negative six side. One times, or excuse me, six times negative one is negative six. Absolute value equals negative six makes it extraneous. So that one goes away. So my only solution here is five. I agree with that one for A. Okay. 3x minus 2 equals 2x minus 3. And 3x minus 2 equals negative of 2x minus 3. Uh, let's subtract 2x and add 2. So that's going to be x here equals negative 1. 3x minus 2 equals negative 2x plus 3. Let's um, add 2x to both sides and add 2 to both sides. Then that gives us 5x equals 5, dividing both sides by 5, gives us x equals positive 1. If I check negative 1, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5, absolute value is positive 5. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, minus 3 is negative 5, so that one is extraneous. 3 times 1 is 3, minus 2 is 1, absolute value is 1. 2 times 1 is 2, minus 3 is negative 1. That one also is extraneous. So what am I left with? No solution. Let's jump into inequalities. Now, this chart is on page 53 in your textbook. And it used to be the way that I taught solving absolute value inequalities and graphing absolute value inequalities and, and all that stuff. And then I thought to myself, self, there's got to be an easier way. And there really is. Okay. So you can use this chart if you want. It's there for you. I'm not going to stop you from using it. However, there is an or. We use logic. Okay. We use logic. Okay. It's, just, it's a little tweak. It's a little easier. It, you know, it, I like it, okay? So, I got two basic absolute value inequalities here. A less than and a greater than, okay? What I'm going to do in both of them, in both of the cases, I'm going to do this inequality as if it were an equality. So I'm going to say here, x equals 4, and x equals, I gotta fix that, and x equals negative 4. Okay. So those then are going to be my key numbers on the number line.
Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at if it's less than or less than or equal to. There's a less than component to it. That's going to be the inside of those two numbers. So my graph here is going to look like that. And if I need to write that in inequality form, that would be negative 4 is less than x is less than positive 4. If we refer back to our chart, less than becomes a handle type of situation okay, in both of those cases, the first two lines. Okay. So if it's less than, it's inside. Okay. If it's greater than, again, I set up my two equations. Set up my number line. Two numbers that I care about now are negative 2 and positive 2. Okay. But now, because it's greater than, I'm thinking... Outside of my numbers. Okay. So this one would look like as Mr. Gallagher just said, roll the boat. And then if I need to give my inequality, x is less than negative 2 or x is greater than positive 2. Okay. Less than, think inside. Greater than, think outside. Okay. Let's put it to work. Absolute value of 2x plus 6 is greater than or equal to 6. So right away, I'm thinking what? I'm thinking outside. It's a greater than. So I'm thinking outside my numbers. Let's make our two equations. They are what? What are my two equations? 2x plus 6. We'll call it equal 6. Okay. And 2x plus 6 equals negative 6. Oops. Well, I don't know why I put 0 there. Solve them. Yes? So the two numbers that I care about are 
negative 6 and 0. And I want to be outside those numbers, right? Because it's a greater than. So, outside those numbers. And if we needed to write an inequality, we can roll the boat. It's a less than case, so we're thinking inside. Two numbers that we care about are negative 2 and positive 2 thirds. So we got that which is negative 2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2 thirds. Yeah, buddy? Good times. Good times roll. Your homework it is due tomorrow. There's really not that many problems to go along with it. Two, four, six, eight, eleven.